Hey everybody, uh, what is up? Uh, welcome back to another edition here of the Washington Football Maniacs channel. If you're new here, thank you for joining us. Please consider subscribing to this channel um, on a regular basis. I try to uh, put out videos um, on a daily basis or at least three times a week. Um, I try to be a little bit more frequently with that during the season and we're you know of course we're getting closer and closer to training camp so um, hopefully things will pick up right now we're we are kind of in a dead spot uh, I would say you know um, until training camp starts so there's not a whole lot of news going on I know you may see some other youtubers out there trying to generate some news stories um, really the only thing that seems to be going on right now at this point is the Dan Snyder thing where you know he's going to testify in front of the uh, uh, the oversight committee and he's going to do it you know via video and he's not being subpoenaed they actually turned down the subpoena so um, other than that, there's not really a lot of news. Uh, I think the biggest news that, of course, that we had uh, the other day certainly was Terry McLaurin getting uh, re-signed. I think we were all really nervous about Terry McLaurin getting re-signed. Um, I was starting to have my doubts, definitely, but now that he is re-signed, you know, optimism seems to be shining throughout D.C., you know, Right now you have Terry McLaurin, you have Jahan Dotson, who people have just spoke great things about him throughout OTAs, uh, throughout these little mini camps and things like that. And so it sounds like you're already starting to kind of have uh, the creation of the present day posse. You know, uh, for those who are too young, uh, I'm talking about um, our wide receiving core from the 80s. Uh, and early 90s, the posse, Gary Clark, Ricky Sanders, Art Monk. Um, and now, you know, you're having guys like uh, Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson. Who's going to be that third guy? You know, is it is it going to be uh, Diami Brown who steps up to be that third guy? I, I really hope so because now you're going to have three dynamic young guys uh, being – you know, who could be the best in the league, who can be burners, um, who can score touchdowns in an instant. And so this is really going to be exciting to watch, I think. Um, I would say if there's anything that's going to be suspect coming up this season for Washington right now, it will still wind up being the, the uh, secondary. Um, you know, I, I did hear some good things about um, uh, Benjamin St. Juice uh, stepping up in, in training or mini camps and, and OTAs and hoping that he's going to take the leap this year. Um, but, you know, I was, I was not very happy about our secondary last year. Uh, Fuller, I really expect him to be kind of a shutdown guy. And, that, and maybe he was to a certain extent, but um, definitely it was not really what I was thinking it was going to be last year. And uh, so I really hope that our secondary is going to be a little bit better than what it was. Um, but, you know, we, we've, you know, we've definitely drafted some guys. Uh, we, we do have some talent out there. It's, it's just coaching them up, getting them to the next level. And that's why I'm hoping that we're going to have uh, coming up in this, uh, this year. But, that's that's my um, you know that's my concern and certainly uh, the linebacker um, position as well. Jamin Davis is he ready to take that next step? <clears throat> Jamin Davis, you know everybody was was kind of um, kind of down on him because he was our first round pick last year and didn't really produce a whole lot. Um, you know, at times you can kind of see why we drafted him, but, you know, overall wasn't really a, a huge playmaker for us. Um, you know, again, hearing some good things out of minicamp, but 
you know, you always hear really good things out of uh, mini camp for for people and players, and and really it comes down to what's going to happen when you start to see them on the field for real. Uh, that's where the rubber meets the road, and and that's where I want to see guys like Jamin Davis show you that he has taken that next step into his sophomore season. Uh, so um, Cole Holcomb, I have no worries about whatsoever. Cole Holcomb, he, he is a beast. Um, I think he's going to be okay. So, yeah, secondary and uh, linebacker crew, uh, those are the two areas I'm going to keep my eyes on. Everywhere else, I feel like we're pretty solid. Um, I have no, I actually have no uh, worries with our offensive line. I know we lost Brandon Sheriff. Um, we, we lost Eric Flowers, but at the same time, our um, coaching staff did such a wonderful job with um, with the offensive line when those guys were injured. So um, I don't have worries with our offensive line. I definitely don't have worries with our offense. I think we're going to be stacked with our offense. And even if we have some injuries, which we will along the ways that I think we're going to be okay with that. Um, so just coming up, I, I think that this is going to be the most talented team that Ron Rivera's had, um, you know, since he's come to Washington. Now, certainly that 2020 team was pretty talented, um, but we didn't really have the best quarterback play. Um, I think everybody could probably agree with that. I think this year we're going to have solid quarterback play. We're going to have what many have touted to be the best backup quarterback. And as history serves, the backup quarterback in Washington is always the uh, the popular guy. You know, it was when Joe Theismann was in, it's like Jay Schrader was the popular uh, backup and you know, then when people start hating on Jay Schrader, you know, Doug Williams was the popular guy, and and uh, then Mark Rippon and all this stuff, and and then people started liking Stan Humphreys, and <clears throat> excuse me, the list goes on and on. So, um, you know, uh, you know Taylor Heineke is still a popular guy uh, here in D.C. Well, I'm not in D.C., but you know what I'm saying. Um, so. And, and Wentz, you know, certainly people have cautious optimism about Wentz. Um, you know, as, as a Washington fan, you have, cop, uh, you have cautious optimism as it is. So it is what it is, right? Um, but I really think that we're going to have a, a pretty decent season this year. Um, and, you know, if anything, um, they're going to fight their guts out. I'm using a Joe Gibbs term, but they're going to fight their guts out because Ron Rivera knows that if this team does not produce, that he is going to be on the hot seat. And, you know, he does not want to be the distraction away from Dan Snyder, right? You know, we want all the the pain and suffering and the bad publicity to be on Dan Snyder. We don't want it to be on Ron Rivera. If anything, we want all the good publicity to be on Ron Rivera and company and watching them, you know, letting the the play on the field and the wins rack up so that we're forgetting about all the junk that's off the field that honestly when it comes down to it, it's not why we watch football. We don't care about I mean, this is gonna sound bad, but we don't care about, you know, all of the stuff that goes on in the business, you know, that should not be our, of our concern. Yes, we care about the people. We do care about the people. I want people to be treated correctly, to be treated with utmost respect, especially the ladies. Um, but I'm a football fan, and I watch football for the football. I don't watch it to find out what's going to happen with the owner or anything like that. And I've noticed you guys don't either because when I come out with videos about Dan Snyder, um, the views just go down the tubes. So I, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to try to limit, unless it's some, you know, earth-shaking news that he has left ownership for good, then um, 
I'm going to try to keep my reporting based on football because that, that's what you guys want to hear. Um, so that, that being said, um, there's not really a whole lot to report. Uh, I just really want to show you my thoughts on what I think as far as um, areas to really be concerned about, um, areas I don't think we need to be concerned about. Um, and as far as uh, any concern, um, you know, um, my last uh, video or last other video, um, I was telling you guys about uh, the condition of my father, uh, and I really, really appreciate those who reached out to me uh, to uh, offer your prayers and your thoughts and your concerns. I really th I thank you for that. That means the world to me. That means more to me than anything that you could ever give me. And I just ask that you keep on sending those prayers. Um, they did have to put him on the ventilator uh, on, um, I believe it was Tuesday, they had to do that, um, or was it Wednesday? I, it was Wednesday. They had to do that. Uh, and when I first heard the news about that, I was, um, I really felt that this was like the, the last straw, like the last line to defense, which it, it kind of is, but, um, my heart sunk, you know, because it told me that nothing is working, that, um, He's, you know, he's losing his, his fight with COVID. Um, but, you know, as I got there, and, you know, and I spoke with him before they did it, he was in good spirits. Um, he actually, uh, he actually looked like he felt better, you know. Um, I know he wasn't feeling good, but, you know, he, I could tell that he felt better just because his family was there, visited him, and showing, you know, their love to him, and, uh, so, putting him on the ventilator, what that does, basically, you know, it's, it's going to help to, uh, I guess, accelerate the, the healing of his lungs, because his lungs have been damaged so much from the, uh, uh, the pneumonia, um, uh, so they had to do this so that they, they could turn him on his stomach, which helps to, to relieve a lot of pressure and stuff off the lungs to help, I guess, get the rest of the, um, you know, the pneumonia out, the, to, the healing process to, to go further. But, um, you know, they're, they're expected him to be on the ventilator for at least uh, seven days, so about a week. Um, they're not going to leave him on the ventilator for more than 10 days. So uh, I'm not even thinking past what happens if, you know, He's not healed up by that. I'm not even thinking that. Um, I'm thinking that this is going to ultimately help him to uh, to get back to to being healthier. Um, he's still going to have a long road of recovery even after this. So I just, uh, guys, I just want you to continue to pray. Um, it's been hard for me to, um, you know, make these videos, um, you know, to, to have my mind on, okay, what's the next video I need to put out for you guys? Because my mind has not been on football. Um, you know, on, on top of all of that, uh, for the last six weeks, I've been, um, helping, um, with my wife. She had rotator cuff surgery. So I've, I've had to help her with everything. Um, you know, she's not been able to drive. She's not been able to do a lot of things for herself. So uh, that kind of cuts into uh, video time as well. And I've had, you know, certainly I've had to pick up my share of, of um, helping around the house. And all in all, just um, family comes first. And so I've put my family first. Uh, the the channel has definitely suffered i can definitely tell you that i mean um i went from having videos that were getting you know at least um well you know on a bad week or a bad day um a video might get like three or four hundred views but you know on average um, I would at least get a thousand views on a video, sometimes four or five thousand views. And I've had videos that have 
gotten 50 views and, and things like that. And so, yeah, my, my revenue on this channel has certainly, well, I, I probably owe YouTube for uploading videos at this point. I mean, it's, it's been bad. Um, so that being said, if you guys want to support me, uh, you can cash out. I mean, it's a, it's a donation. I don't know. I, I started to cash out a bit ago, and I, I throw a little bit of money in there every now and then just in case I'm out because I never carry cash on me. And, um, you know, sometimes it's like um, you may get to a snow cone um, standee place where they, they're not accepting cards, and I've seen that, but they do cash out. So, that you know, I, I do it for stuff like that but um i don't know if you want to if you feel sorry for me <laughs> and you're like hey i want to help you with your channel you can cash at me you know if it's a dollar hey that's great you know i don't whatever honestly i am not necessarily asking for money but if you want to donate that's probably the best way to donate to me um, you can sign up for my Patreon, but honestly, I am not active on it right now. So I would hate for you to sign up for that and get nothing in return. Uh, so this is purely want to donate. That's the best way to do it. Um, I would appreciate your donations. It really does help. Um, we, we have had a lot of, um, uh, financial expenses with, you know, medical bills and that, that jazz, but, you know, also my channel has went in the tubes, and so, uh, the money that I would normally get each month, um, from this channel, I have not gotten because I've not put out videos, so, you want to help keep this channel pumped up, you know, you can do that, but honestly, if you just want to pray on on you know pray for me pray for my family most importantly pray for my dad um that that means more to me than anything else so um i just uh, i appreciate that um that that being said <laughs> this video has gotten way too long so you guys take care i hope I'm going to come out with a better video here and um, probably won't be until maybe sometime next week. But um, maybe by then I'll hear some better news um, from, you know, my dad's condition. And maybe we'll just have some cool news to share, you know, for the Washington Commanders. That That's what I hope. But anyway, you guys take care and God bless you.